Hi everyone, in today's video we'll be going over a quick script that allows you to create this type of building. Now we're just doing an overall form today, but what's cool about it is that it allows you to increase the width, it, you could also increase the height of the building, also the overall pitch of the roof, and ultimately the length of the building. Now, it's pretty straightforward steps here. I'll go over all of them, but I just wanted to share with you um, some of the things that we're getting started today. Now, I'll also make sure to create, make this kind of a series where I kind of develop this further, but for today, this is what I'll be going over, and I'll also be sharing the script, so make sure you check out the description for that. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so in today's video, I wanted to create like an architectural standalone house. So we'll go ahead and start really simple. This time we'll start with a point. So we'll go to construct. Construct point, right? So we have here at the origin point, a point. We'll go ahead and move this point And the x and y direction. So we'll go to vector x, y, z. Now we can plug in the point here and plug in the vector and see that we want to go in the x, we'll say uh, 10 feet. So we know that if we want it to be 10 feet, we want it to multiply. We need to multiply it by 12 if our units are inches. So that'll be 120, and we'll say in the x direction. Now we're also going to want to go in the opposite x direction, giving us this, right? So now we have the ability to move it in the x, direction both ways but notice that now it's 10 times 12 and that's twice as much so what we actually need to do now is do we'll bring in a bigger slider so we'll go here to like 30 50 and then we'll divide by 2 right and the reason why we divide by 2 is because 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5 but since we're doing it both ways, then that'll ultimately be 10. So we'll plug into here. So now the overall distance that we have from here to here is going to be 10, and we can increase that. So that's our jumping off point. We're starting off basic using points. Now we can use these two points, and we'll go to polyline. and we'll plug it right into there. So basically creating a two points that stretch out and a line that connects them. Now we'll take these two points and this is going to be our wall height. So we're gonna move vertically in the Z direction and we'll plug in these two points. We'll plug in the Z direction here and now We'll go ahead and copy the, actually I have to do that again. So I'll go to 50, but I'll change that down to like 10 because that's gonna be 10 feet. And then I'll do times 12 again, giving me the height of the wall. Now, how do we connect these down to this one? Well, it's simple. We'll have to bring in a line from a start point to an end point. So this is going to be the start point and that's going to be the end point. So we'll go to start and then end. So now we have wall height, overall width, the next step is going to be to take the original point and move it right up the same amount that we moved up those points. So let's go ahead and 
move the original point up the same amount as our wall height. Now, we'll take this point and we'll actually move it again because now we can pick the height. So we'll move this one in the Z direction And I'll go ahead and take this and copy paste, or you can just uh, drag it down and hold alt. And then I'll plug this into this one, giving us the roof pitch, right? This one will decrease it to 20. And now we're going to want to connect these two points to one. So we'll create a line. that connects these two points to this point. So starting at the bottom and then ending here at the top. Right, so let's go back and see what we've done. The width of the building, the height of the wall, the roof pitch. Now we can basically take all of that information and join the curves. So we'll join the top curve with the wall lines along with the bottom one. And we'll take all of this information well, we can just basically hide this one. Actually, no, let's just preview that one. We don't want this middle one. Cool. The rest of the points we could probably use. Perfect. And then here we'll say we'll see probably one closed value. So perfect. Now we'll take this and now we're going to extrude it in which direction? Well, we know we want to go in the Y direction. So we'll take this, extrude, and I'll go unit Y. So we'll plug in this one, unit Y, and then we'll say, actually, we'll take this one, copy, paste, and then we'll bring this over here. Now notice that when you extrude it, it's actually um, hollow. So we don't want it to be hollow, we want it to be solid. And to fix that, we'll go to boundary surfaces and we'll plug in this original curve into that and we'll actually extrude that instead, giving us a solid extrusion. And so, like I said, let's go ahead Go ahead and play around with these, make sure that everything is still working. And now we'll take this and just to uh, make it kind of fun, we'll just rotate it and join it together. And then we'll leave this as an exercise uh, that will continue on and I'll show you some tricks uh, just by doing different exercises. Uh, for now, we'll take this one, we'll bring in an area component, giving us the centroid or center of mass, allowing us to use that as a reference point to rotate. So I'll go ahead and rotate an object, and we'll rotate this object. The plane is going to be the centroid and the angle is going to be 0.5 pi. We'll right click, go to degrees, and we'll just say 90 degrees. So we have the ability to, you know, if we wanted to get kind of crazy, we could 
uh, Q will go to 90. And now we see that we have those buildings intersecting perfectly there, which we can now do solid union. Allowing us to take this one, then this one, middle click disable preview, and now we have a really cool overall form of a building. When we increase the length of it, the centroid and center of mass kind of stays there and notice how, what happens here. Same with the height of the roof and same with this. So we didn't use any fancy tools or anything crazy. We just went ahead and used points, lines, extrusions, and surfaces to create this type of form. Now we can always come in and hollow it out, uh, but I think that's going to be for the next time uh, I go over this. But for now, I just wanted to share with you guys some of the cool things that you're able to do with Grasshopper. And they don't have to be crazy parametric uh, pavilions or domes or anything. It can be as simple as uh, standalone buildings that are parametric. Uh, so if you do have any questions or anything, make sure to let me know. And uh, thank you for coming by Deco Graphic Studio. I hope to see you next time.